Hey guys, welcome to SparkPoint. Today I'm gonna to be doing a real world performance review of Adobe After Effects on the M1 MacBook Pro. And then I'll be comparing it to my much beefier i9 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's been nearly a year since Apple announced its transition to its own Apple Silicon. And by now, most of us know that the first of these chips, the M1 chip, is an absolute beast. Now, being that I'm a professional motion graphics animator and I use After Effects on a daily basis, the first thing that I wanted to know is how will After Effects perform on these new M1 chips? How do M1 Max perform for everyday After Effects users? Well, let me just say, I am truly surprised by how well the M1 MacBook Pro performs inside of After Effects. But there are some significant downsides. Let's first start with the good. I've owned the M1 MacBook Pro since its release back in November of last year, and I've been using it in conjunction with my 16 inch i9 MacBook Pro. So how exactly does the M1 stack up against my beefier i9 MacBook Pro? Well, I've devised a real world performance test with a real life project that I worked on. I wanted to test two things, the playback speed and the render speed. Now, if you're in After Effects every day like I am, you know how important playback speed is. I picked a project that I used a while back that kind of had a variety of different things going on in it. This particular project has lots of vector layers, um, a decent amount of effects use, and even a character rig. So I felt like this project was kind of the best middle of the road project to test both the playback speed and the render speed on both of these computers. So in order to test the playback speed, I essentially just opened both of these projects up on both of the computers and I let them play back until they started dropping frames and I timed how much time that took. So to my surprise, both computers got the exact same results. So my 16 inch MacBook Pro took 30.25 seconds before it dropped a frame and the M1 took 30.19 seconds. Pretty much no difference there. So now with some frames cached, I let it play back again and my 16 inch MacBook Pro got 52.27 seconds before dropping a frame. And the M1 came in at exactly 50 seconds. So the 16 inch was able to preview just a little longer after it had cached some frames. So I think that the difference here is still pretty negligible, but the 16 inch MacBook Pro, because it's pulling from 32 gigabytes of RAM, as opposed to the M1 that's only pulling from eight gigs of RAM and using swap RAM, I think that the 16 inch MacBook Pro may ultimately have a little bit more endurance when it comes to previewing things. Now keep in mind the M1 MacBook is running After Effects through Rosetta 2. When Adobe finally does get around to releasing After Effects for Apple Silicon, we may see even better performance out of the M1 than we do even the i9, the 16 inch. So now let's talk real quick about the render test results. Now this is where I was truly surprised. Rendering this project out on the 16 inch MacBook Pro took 10 minutes and 41 seconds, while the M1 took only 10 minutes and 24 seconds. That's a whole 17 seconds faster than the much more expensive i9 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now the difference is still pretty small, but it's pretty unbelievable when you consider the price differences between these two machines. And that's not even to mention that the M1 MacBook Pro is way more efficient and gets way more battery life. Now, one thing I'll say, of course, is the After Effects is very difficult to real world test because everyone is using it for a different use case. Other people might be doing a ton of 3D work inside of After Effects, and that could totally change the results of this test. This is simply my experience with what I do on a daily basis. With that said though, I've pretty much thrown everything I could possibly think at this computer, and I have not run into any issues. I should say not very many issues anyway. Let's talk about some of the downsides. Well, to start with, After Effects on the M1 uses a ton of swap memory. For this particular project, I was hovering around seven gigabytes of swap use, which is a lot. And this could probably easily be exceeded with a even more complex project. Now, if you are looking to get one of the M1 computers for After Effects, I would recommend getting 16 gigabytes of RAM. Just based on some other videos I've seen out there online, your swap usage will go way down if you've got the 16 gigabyte model. Now here's another downside, and this one could potentially be a pretty big one for you. There's some plugins that I use that just don't work all together or they have some performance issues. Now this is to be expected given the fact that After Effects is not running natively on Apple Silicon yet. Now I've noticed particularly bad performance using the character rigging tool Duik. 
it still works, but it just runs very sluggishly. So if you're a heavy plugin user, you might want to steer clear for now. So with those things aside, I think the performance is absolutely mind blowing. Even working with 3D layers and 3D compositions has proved to be no match for the M1 processor. So should you get an M1 MacBook for After Effects use? If you're an everyday After Effects user and you're looking to have this as your only machine, your everyday driver, I don't know that I would necessarily recommend getting one of these at this point in time. At this point in time, it's just a little unreliable. You know, I use the example of using Duik, the character rigging tool, slowing down my workflow. I actually was working on a project with Duik and I actually had to switch to my 16 inch MacBook Pro and I couldn't use the M1 anymore. Now, if you have a main computer and you're just looking for something portable, you're looking for a secondary machine or whatever it is, I absolutely think you should pick one of these up. That about sums it up. Please let me know if you found this video helpful. I'm still new to this, so I need to know what information is actually helpful to you guys. Please give this video a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. I will love you forever if you do. Thank you so much again. We'll see you next time.